Thank you. Um, I'm Cristina Garcia. Uh, I'm a postdoc at Leiden Observatory. And today uh, I'm going to talk about protocluster traced by high red tip quasar, in particular uh, red tip four. So, um, yeah, I'm going to start with this plot. Um, this is the clustering of quasars in the universe as a function of redshift. So the, I want to show that the, the correlation length uh, for quasar in the local universe is uh, relatively flat. But at redtip two, we uh, the clustering start increasing dramatically up to redtip four, which is the highest redtip for which the clustering of quasars have been measured so far. And this measurement of clustering for quasars indicates that quasars should trace uh, massive dark matter halos in the early universe, and particularly uh, we expect halo masses around four to six times ten to the twelve solar masses over h. So. The expectation is then that we we should detect a large over densities of galaxies around quasars at red tip four. This expectation is also in good agreement with uh, what we know from theoretical simulations. However, when people have been trying to detect such over densities around high red tip quasars, the picture is uh, very confusing and contradictory. So. So here I'm showing a summary of the around 30 studies of quasar environment already tip, uh, greater than or similar to four. And you can see that more or less half of the study find over densities of galaxies around quasar, but the other half find uh, the that the number density around quasars is in agreement with the number density of galaxies in blank fields. So, so far, there is not clear evidence that quasar are tracing ma massive dark matter halos as suggested by the quasar cluster in our redshift form. So some possible reason for this contradictory result is uh, first that most of these studies or all of these studies actually are based on the study of individual quasar field. So they are affected by long, low number statistic and high cosmic variance. And the other problem is uh, that they, they have been studied uh, from an incomplete galaxy population. So most of the studies are uh, targeting Lyman alpha meters or Lyman break galaxies. So galaxies at optical wavelengths, but uh, for example, dusty companions are still um, studied with dusty companions are still missed. And indeed some serendipitous detection of dusty close, cl uh, close companion around quasar has been detected in some ALM observation that has been um, aimed to study the quasar itself, not the environment, but they are just serendipitous detection. So this suggests that we could have over densities of dusty galaxies around quasar, for example. So uh, one powerful technique to overcome the high cosmic variance and the low number statistics in this kind of a study is to measure the quasar galaxy cross correlation function. So instead of just target one quasar field, you target a large sample of quasar and you stack your information and you measure the, the over density uh, minus one uh, as a function of the distance from the quasar. So this is exactly the cross correlation function. So the expectation is that if galaxies are accumulated around the quasar, you expect a very strong cross correlation function between the quasar and the galaxies. And other advantages of the cross correlation is that you don't uh, only estimate the total over density of the field, but you also have the radial profile. And you also can have, uh, you can relate your result with the autocorrelation of quasar and the galaxy population and then uh, infer uh, a halo mass uh, from an independent method for the populations. So this is exactly the technique that we used uh, in this study. So we designed a survey of Lyman alpha meters and CO emitters in the environment of 17 quasars at red 4 So the idea is to trace the clustering of uh, optical and dusty populations simultaneously. Um, the quasars uh, are selected from Sloan, so we have a spectroscopic redshift based on the UV emission lines. So in the left hand, I'm showing one example of our optical imaging, which we took with BLT in first two. 
um, around the quasars. Um, I'm here, yeah, in this case, we have five line model parameters uh, around the quasar. And in the right hand, and I'm showing one example of our ALMA observation for one of the quasar field um, uh, that we did with, uh, with band three uh, in order to detect CO423 emitting galaxies. So you can see that the volume that we are tracing with ALMA is, uh, of course, much smaller because uh, the field of view of ALMA is, is only, in this case, 60 arc second in, in radius. So with ALMA, we only can explore the small scale clustering, but with the optical uh, images, we can explore a larger area. Uh, also, the redshift coverage is similar in both uh, surveys. So I'm going to start with the results for the optical population. So we found in total 25 line manometers in our 17 quasar fields, whereas we only expected 18.4 line manometers in blank fields. So this number here is computed based on the luminosity function of line manometer array tip four, which is very well constrained and using the effective volume of our survey. So in total, we detect an over density of 1.4. Um, so we can conclude that in, on average, quasar trace, trace massive dark matter structure in the early universe, also the over density is still mild. Um, and if we see the radial profile, you can see in the top right panel, the, the cumulative number density of flame manometer as a function of the distance from the quasar. So you can see that the, the uncertainties are still large, but we are systematically above of the expectation from the blank fields. And uh, at larger uh, radius, you are uh, getting the background number density, basically. So in the bottom panel, I'm showing the cross correlation function, which is defined uh, by the observed number of galaxies in quasar fields over the spec expected number of galaxies in blank field. So the over density basically uh, minus one as a function of, of the distance from the quasar. So we, in general, we detected a positive quasar line manometer cross correlation. So this indicates that galaxies are concentrated around the quasar. However, we compare our result with the expect, expected quasar line manometer cross correlation function. This expectation is, is determ determined based on a deterministic bias model. So, assuming that quasar and line manometer trace the same uh, dark matter distribution, and we uh, detected a 2.1 time less line manometer than we were expecting. So if we now move to the results coming from our AMA data, um, we here I'm showing some example of the CO423 uh, emission lines that we detected. Uh, we have five CO emitters in, in the complete survey, whereas only we were expecting 0.28 CO emitters in the field, which result in a very huge over density of 17. Again, this expectation is uh, computed uh, using the luminosity function of CO emitters or RT4, um, uh, considering the volume of our survey. So let me recall you that the volume that we are tracing here is only uh, 1,000 kilometers per second around the quasar. So we are focusing really in a small volume around the quasar. That is why we were expecting very few, well, less than one galaxy in the total survey. And if we see the radial profile, you can see in the top panel that we have a significant over density of CO meters compared with expectation in blank fields. Um, and we have here the cross correlation function between the CO and, and the quasar as a black line. Uh, so a positive correlation function again. And, and we compared this strong correlation that we found with other populations. So specifically with the alignment of meter, which is what I just showed some slides before, uh, we have a much more stronger clustering of CO meters uh, around the quasars. Um, and we also compare with the cross correlation between quasar and Lyman break galaxies, and we found similar results. However, this study for lay member galaxies is in a different uh, quasar sample, but it's useful for comparison. 
Uh, also, let me show you the 2D sky distribution of the sources. Um, because taking advantage of our optical images, we looked for counterpart, optical counterpart of the CO423 emitting galaxies. Here, for this part, we extended our study uh, up to 3,000 kilometers per second. So we are explore, uh, exploring the whole Alma cube. And in this volume, we detected nine uh, galaxies in total. However, uh, well, the nine galaxies are the points here in this figure, and the different colors are showing the different fields. So only one of those sources has a counterpart uh, in optical wavelengths. Uh, uh, thank you, Tony. <laughs> has a Lyman alphameter counterpart. But all the other has no emission at all in Lyman alpha. We even look for uh, Lyman alpha emission at lower signal to noise, uh, signal to noise greater than three, and no one has any counterparts. So the CO emitting galaxies around the quasar seem to be invisible at optical wavelengths. So some possible explanation for this discrepancy between Lyman alpha emitters and CO emitters in, in this field. Um, it, one could be that uh, the galaxies has a small star formation efficiency. So uh, in, in this case, we are assuming that CO is tracing the molecular gas in the galaxy and Lyman alpha meters are tracing the instantaneous star formation. But we also know that the Lyman alpha emission is a really complex line and is also affected by other um, factors like the CGM and IGM properties. So we really need additional data to trace better the star formation rate and, and trace the, the physical properties of the galaxies to explore this possibility. So the second possibility is that galaxies around quasar could be more dusty. Uh, so that will mean that the alignment alpha emission is suppressed or attenuated. So it, it becomes invisible uh, at optical wavelengths, at least at the depth of our study. So to really explore this possibility, we, we will need deeper optical observations or additional ALMA continuum observation to study the dust properties. And finally, let me very quickly show this bonus science, I call it, because we can also use our uh, CO quasar cross correlation function to estimate the halo masses of CO emitters, which has have been never done before. So it's a very nice first approach to this, to the halo mass of these sources. So based on some assumptions like the, a deterministic bias model and uh, extrapolating our measurement at larger scales, we measure this course correlation length, which result in halo masses of around three, three to 10 uh, times 10 to the 11 solar masses. So this is similar to Lyman break galaxies a little bit higher than Lyman alpha meters, but it's still consistent within error bars. But interestingly, it is much lower than the clustering of two millimeter galaxies. So maybe CO emitters are tracing a different population than the whole population of two millimeter galaxies that we typically detect uh, with ALMA or other surfaces. So I'm gonna finish with a summary and I will highlight this first conclusion we detect an enhanced enhancement of Lyman alpha meters and CO meters in quasar field. So quasar trace massive structure in the early universe, but we need to always take uh, into account the high cosmic variants that are affected in this kind of studies and the incomplete sampling of galaxy population that could uh, result in confusing results uh, in, 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 the, in the past. Uh, so, yeah, the other is what I already said, so I will stop here. Thank you.